Hi, everyone. Please sit down and uh, we can focus. Uh, it's very funny to me. I was thinking about how interesting the internet is that everyone here maybe flew out from halfway around the world to go to a convention where you can talk to each other. They spent money on travel, on being here, on food. They left their family behind. They can see the world's best speakers. And then you look at your phone. It's, it's apparently more interesting than the people speaking. So that tells me a lot. It was kind of an observation when I started. It that, that screen is so interesting to everyone. So maybe I should be there. So as an artist, I started with many different things. I started with drawing as a child. And uh, I made animations. I made animations with Lego. And I, you play around with everything you have. And I was in art school. And there were some classes with the internet. And you start with the internet, and you think, well, maybe that's the place where I should be. So um, I, I thought everybody started making websites to put images of art they've made. And when we think of art, we think of paintings or sculpture. So you might think of, this is art, uh, The Thinker by Rodin. Uh, you probably have seen it. And then we can look at a picture, but it's not the actual sculpture. You can see all the different sides of the sculpture, but it's not the work itself. So I thought, why don't I make the work in the browser? And that's what I started doing. And I was fascinated with the talks yesterday about neuroscience and the two things they mentioned, uh, the power of intuition, which I think is very interesting for artists, and uploading the mind and connecting the mind to the computer. So I think artists without technology have been externalizing their minds. So we've been able to connect with artists through their artworks, and they've scattered their mind all over museums in the world. Um, and I've decided to upload my mind onto the network. So that's how I see it. You're an artist, and you create whatever you create, and you leave pieces of yourself over the world. And I thought, we're creating a universal library, so I'm going to make works for that universal library that are compatible with the universal library. Um, there's a lot of talk about money at this conference. This is a, a work about infinite growth. So a little, a little trick here is that linear perspective, it seems that things that are further away are smaller. Those people over there are not smaller than you guys, but they look smaller. Uh, if you don't do that, then you can have infinite growth. So the, the, the dollars in front are just as big as the dollars in the back. So it can keep on growing forever and ever. And that's what I like about working with the computer, that this is not an animation. This is a, a script. So sometimes the next dollar is there. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's there. It, I always say I kind of create fountains or waterfalls. So it's always doing the same thing, but not really. So that's what I'm trying to do. And by the way, all the works that I'm showing today, you can look at them at your phone. So maybe that's more comfortable. Uh, <laughs> this is stagnation means decline.com. And so each work I put in its own domain name. And each work is kind of the, the end of a, of a problem or something that was on my mind or an interest. So I, I try to focus one interest into one work. And then I finish it. I put it in the domain name. Uh, we I've been doing this since 2000, and uh, I'm almost at 100 websites. Um, kind of proud of that. This is one that resonated with a lot of people, much better than this.com. And so I like this idea that wherever you are, in a, in a hotel or at a concert, if you want to look at these people, they're still kissing, and they'll always be there kissing. Um, this work has also been sold, so the idea is that Digital is, there's no scarcity, right? Like you, every file you can just copy infinitely, infinitively. Um, but domain names are scarce. So there's a real trade opportunity there. And I, I don't like limiting access. So I don't like the system of you create a file and then you put a password and that makes it collectible. I, I like the idea that it's open, it's collectible because of that. Um, here's an example. This website was just sold. So once the website is sold, the name of the collector is mentioned on the title bar. And then I kind of see that as a, an act of vanity and then as an act of generosity. So you're pleased to share with the world that you want to support this work. And you facilitate me making more work. So that you're helping.
Uh, and now we go back into the future. This is a kind of different work, text-free browsing. So it, it's a slightly different project, but I like the idea that you can browse the web without text. So let's go to Facebook. This is my Facebook page, and you know what it looks like. And then there's a little smiling guy here with the glasses, and if you, you can put on sunglasses, and then text disappears all over the web. So any website you look at now is text-free. <laughs> so that's what New York Times looks like without text. And then you can search without text. So you go to Google. And uh, let's search the DLD conference. There's the DLD. I don't know. Is it this one? <laughs> well, this is the DLD Twitter page without text. Um, another example. So most of my websites are these very visual ones, but I have a few that are different. This is pleaselike.com. Um, that, uh, I, I, thought, I thought the like button is, was really an icon of our times, of our online attention, and, all the, and I thought maybe I should make a painting of it, maybe I should make a drawing of it, but that's, no, that's not the like button. The like button is a dynamic thing that changes all the time. So I bought the domain name pleaselike.com, and this is a work that you visit and you like it or you don't. <laughs> and, uh, I'm ha it, maybe there's a bunch of influencers here. It, right now, it's at 171,227. Maybe you guys can retweet it, and we reach a million today. I don't know. Let's see how powerful you guys are. Um, so it's, it's just an ongoing research. Like some moments, I feel a little down. This is fallingfalling.com. Um, the, the cool thing about when I say making art accessible is that you discover an audience that you didn't know was interested in art, but they actually are. It was a, it was a quote by Keith Haring saying, there's a, there's a huge audience that's being ignored by the art world. And I'm proud to say that all my websites together reach about 35 million people a year, 35 million unique visits. And that's more than the Louvre and the Next Museum combined, I think. And that's just me, so I'm hoping that a lot of artists will see this potential, and uh, we can expand the research. Because it, my approach is one approach, but there's many approaches. Uh, this is almostcalm.com, so you move it around, and if you try, you can try to make the circle disappear. But it, I like to make things slightly annoying, where you almost feel like you have control, but you don't. <laughs> um, that's another thing that fascinates me about the computer, why I think we love it so much, is it, it gives us this notion of control and cleanliness. Um, this is looking at something. So you hear birds, and if you move down, it starts to rain more. So it would be nice if we could do this in real life. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is today. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, I really, I've always noticed, I love this idea that people call a, a, a window, the whole idea of a window, that we call this rectangle on the screen that we run software and we call it a window. It, that's what it is. It, it opens our eyes to something further than the computer. But what's crazy to me is that I don't know how much time you guys spent looking outside, but you probably spent a lot more time looking here. So. Uh, that's why I bought openthiswindow.com, and uh, we spend a lot more time looking at browser windows than real windows. So you open the window, and then you can get back to work. I made this while I was living in the Netherlands, that's where I'm from. Uh, now I live in New York, and it's a different situation, so I made open that window. Can you turn up the volume a bit? I don't know if, it, I have a feeling that the, the automotive industry here is a bit like 
old dudes like Harley Davidson's because all the trucks make so much sound and they don't do in any other part of the world. <laughs> and, and, and it's the same thing as motorcycles. It's just like, yeah, let's just make them as loud as possible. And I don't know, it's strange. Um, I want to do a little experiment. Can you all whip out your phone and visit deepsadness.com? So th this is the other thing that fascinates me is that uh, a website, I don't know if you should call it an object, but it's something that exists at the same time around the world, wherever you want. So go to deepsadness.com and turn up the volume on your phone and then we'll make some music together. So it, it's just 12 tones that play randomly when you click. But, uh, So for me, doing a talk is as much an exhibition as a talk. So you're looking at the actual work. It's not an image of a work. It, it is the work. Um, I'll just browse through a few more. This is slickquick.com. It's not so quick right now. A load of you. Do you guys have any questions already? That's, I think that might be what's happening. I've been, it, the growth has been crazy and the budget is not so high, so my server every time I have to... Okay guys, close your phone. You wanna <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing I want to show is that um, I'm I'm fascinated by this idea that it, the internet is a new canvas and it doesn't have a fixed size. So it's like asking a painter, let's make a painting, and the, the, the painter asks, well, how big is my canvas? And then you say, I don't know. Uh, is it square? Is it rectangular? Is it portrait? Is it landscape? Is it, we don't know. But the device might be this way, the device might be that way. So I always said that a website should be like gas, and like it just fills up a potential space. And this is a huge space, and I want to show you. This was just recent in Korea. It's the biggest screen in Asia. And there was no shipping involved, of course, they just emailed the work. I don't have a studio e either, I never had one, I just go wherever I go and I just bring this. And uh, very happy about that. I work with programmers and I work with manufacturers, but everything is outside. And I hope to keep my organization of one. Okay, that's all I wanted to say, if you guys have questions.